well. <laughs> Good afternoon. We're at a little CL site, but actually, by the time I post this, it'll be episode 12. And that indicates that we've been on the go, left home now almost three months. So we thought it was probably a great time to just have some reflections of what it's like living in a van as opposed to living in a house. Because it's a pretty huge change of lifestyle. Yeah, no, it is. So, uh, first of all, you, if you've been watching this, you'll know we have a motorhome. And one of the things that people often ask is, are we restricted not having a car or any, uh, any vehicle to get anywhere? And we, we've had a motorhome for over six years now. And one of the things we enjoy is just walking with the dogs. So, for us, it's not massively restricted. However, we've got pretty used to public transport. Yeah, no, we have. It is restrictive, though, because Archie's got really bad arthritis and he's limited to walking an hour at a time. But both the dogs are really good on public transport. They've yeah. got used to it now, so we can go on buses and trains, so we can yeah. get to any place that we want to get to. Yeah, and we've even got on a... not not. To, to go and see a particular site but use the bus to get to a country park where we can then walk Archie um, you know within within his limitations at the moment you might notice I've got some notes in my hand and that's just so we don't forget anything and I've scribbled a few things down but we might think of some things as we go but of course being two menopausal women memory's not our strong point no it? no <laughs> and we had a one of our very early experiences was remembering something that we needed to buy yeah and five minutes later, neither of us could remember what it was. So, um, so we've invested in a little whiteboard, which we've got in the van. And when we need something, we have a responsibility <laughs> to, to, to write it up there, to scribble it on our board. Yeah, and it seems to be working. So yeah, no, far. it does. Yeah. So what else? Well, yesterday was a was a rainy day, and and it kind of made us think about the fact that we left in March, and it's been pretty dry. Mm. But yesterday was a, a rainy day, and. And, and of course we're going to be living in this all of next winter as well. We've been away a lot in winter in the past, uh, but of course with a rainy day comes wet clothes yeah. and, wet, and wet dogs. <laughs> uh, and then you've got that very little tiny space in there to, to try and dry everything. <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. But we manage. We manage. Uh, we've got a big garage. So if things are really sopping wet, we can hang things up in there. And we've even hung things up in the shower, haven't we? But the most thing that you need is the wrap round towels for the dogs. That is, that's true. We've got some. We have got some wrap round towels for the dogs, so we can we can wrap them up, keep them dry. All we really need to do is then wipe their feet and their bellies yeah. so that they're not taking too much muck into the van. What, what's it like cleaning the van? Because you do all the inside cleaning, really. Well, I mean, I have to do it every every day because having two dogs with the hairs that they cast, um, and then sort of like once a week, I give it a good clean. Yeah. Um, so sweeping out the dog hairs and stuff like that is every day, but good clean once a week. Can't be as bad as cleaning the house, though, can it? No, it's a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so what else did I scribble down? Oh, um, so since we've been gone nearly three months we've kind of alternated where we've stayed so we've stayed at some big sites with laundry facilities and of course that's really important when you're living <laughs> in a van yes um because we do like to have clean clothes most of the time uh we've stayed at little cl sites like this one um the, do the dogs are barking by the way because somebody's just arrived on the cl site uh, with the motor and there's a beautiful little white poodle with this guy and we had uh, uh, an apricot uh, toy poodle that, that, that unfortunately lost about three years ago. ago. Yeah. Uh, so we're very fond of poodles. They're very intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, barky. Uh, anyway, uh, but barky. But anyway, I've been completely distracted now. So what was I saying? So we've we alternate between bigger sites and small sites, and even some places where we can free park. Challenge when you're free parking, of course, is we've got solar panels, so it's not power. Although Sue does like to dry her hair with the hair dryer, and she moans if she doesn't get to dry her hair frequently. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It is true. As long as we have some time in between that, we've got electricity, so I can dry my hair. <laughs> and uh, and then the other thing, what was the other thing that I was about to say? Ah, is the toilet cassette. So um, 
you have either got to use other toilet facilities, public toilets if they're available, or if you stay in a pub car park, I guess you can use the pub toilet. But otherwise, you need a chemical waste point. So, um, or you need to get bog in a bag or, or some other things. And we haven't done that yet, have we? So, um, so anyway, we, we alternate between sites, and that's working for us so far. Oh, oh the little poodle's coming out now. Ah. So, like all good films, there's always a small interlude. <laughs> Errors caused by keeping our dogs quiet. So let's see if we can get through this. Probably not. This is the, the poodle's coming back out again. <laughs> Where did we get to? Okay. So shopping. We've covered shopping before, but every probably three, four days, we make a point of getting to a big supermarket with a big car park and fill up. Um, and what we really like to do is if there are good recommended local shops then we buy meat and vegetables from local shops uh, because it seems like a great thing to do I told you this wasn't a good time to do it <laughs> but you don't listen do you? no, no. <laughs> no. well you don't listen either <laughs> but I'm the artistic one okay you just stick to the script cooking so we at home have got an arga we've spent Twenty couple of years. Yes, yeah, cooking on the Argo. I well, we, I, I we cook we. on the Argo, <laughs> and uh, we're working out. Well, we too is working <laughs> out uh, how to cook on a gas hob and a, and a gas oven. But it's fine. We barbecue on the move much more than we did at home, and we did barbecue quite a lot actually. But we do a lot more barbecue in there, and it's good. And I barbecue in all weathers, by the way. Um. So, what about us? Me and you, two menopausal women, <laughs> crammed into such a little space with very few doors to slam, actually. What do we do if we want to slam a door? Well, it's no different to when I was at home. I used to go out running. <laughs> that and is that, true. And that gives me my thinking time. Your thinking and your space. Yeah. So, so that's all right. Um, and actually, when Sue's out running, uh, it's normally with Fudge who's younger and able to run and I take Arch out for a walk so that's when I get my thinking time and also when I'm completely when I put my headphones on and I'm doing some editing for this I'm lost aren't I to the world really yeah because I just have lots of fun doing that so that's kind of how we we manage not to fall out too much well we haven't it, fallen out much at all that's no not not yet <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a few things that we could fall out over. Yeah, this being booking, one of them. This being one of them. Booking sites. Yeah. Yeah. I always think I get a good site, and, and I never do, and Sue always gets the good sites. And then a lot of people say, well, what do you do for entertainment? Well, we're, we've got a TV in the van. We've got a digital aerial, so we can get digital TV. And Dan, very kindly for Christmas, bought us an Amazon fire stick. Well, I say Dan. Dan and Lottie bought us an Amazon Fire Stick, and also something I think to... Fudge <laughs> is about to pull the tape. <laughs> and, and Fudge, man, I don't have a tripod. Fudge is about to move this whole thing. So I think we need to call it a day there, don't we? <laughs> We've tried very hard. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have to edit this a lot, but uh, hopefully it's given you a little bit of a flavour of van life, and uh, there'll be more to come, I'm sure. <laughs> Doggy day rover for the dogs. And here they are on the bus, as you can see, all very relaxed They're on their doggy day rovers. I'm currently sitting 
in the rear garden, covered garden of the Imperial Inn in Hereford. This is a dog friendly pub that serves great food, really She's good value for money. To get a bit more involved. This is going to be the most exciting thing I've ever put on the Motorhome Mums channel because this is a Sea Harrier and this is Chris. It is indeed. So what can you tell me? How, I mean, why have we got a Sea Harrier? Well, it's um, Neil who actually owns it. He yeah. bought it off eBay. Wow. Yeah, so it's not the usual thing you buy off eBay. No. Uh, but the important thing about this aircraft is it took part in the Falklands campaign. Oh. So 40 years ago, sort of today, it would be actually in the Falklands. Uh, oh, taking part. 40 years ago today? Today, yes, it would have been taking part in the Falklands. I didn't know any of that, by the way, before <laughs> we, we, we... Chris and I have only just met. We have indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's wow. got a lot of history to yeah. it um, because it took part. Um, yeah. It was originally what was called an FSR-1. Yeah. And then in 1994, it was upgraded to an FA-2, which is the configuration that it is now. Yeah. And then retired in 2006. Wow. So I don't suppose it flies anymore, does no, it? No, <laughs> it will it, never. Would it, would it, would it never no, fly. No, yeah, no. yeah. So it's, just here for just people here to have a look to, at. Indeed, and just to preserve, preserve it. a bit of history. Yeah, indeed. Whoa. So is that a picture of Neil over there? That is. Oh, that is. That was a publicity photo that he had when he first bought the aircraft. So what's his connection? <laughs> None really. He's in a pilot right. suit there, but he was not a pilot. He, he just lived in the area and because these were based at Yeovilton, which is wow. only sort of 20 miles down the road, yeah. they used to fly across here and so wow. he, uh, he, he used to like them. And then when it came up on eBay, he thought he'd uh, have a go and oh. uh, he won the bid. <laughs> and then the next thing, what do you do? Fantastic. You have so, to build a hangar. Oh, I have to build a hangar yeah. and put it in. Keep it in yeah. and keep it all um, nice and tidy. Indeed. And indeed. So that's what I do. I just come up and look after it tinker. for him and tinker, tinker. and clean it. Yeah. It's a bit different to cleaning the car. So yeah. uh, yeah. And, and just keep it looking oh, good. Thank you so much. That's I really right. appreciate yeah. it. Thanks have a good look, Ray. I will do. Thank you very much. <laughs>is situated in a beautiful open location and it seemed a shame not to get the drone into the air and get some beautiful aerial shots as you can see the campsite also has some lodges all of which appear to have a hot tub and as the camera pans round you can see the aircraft hangar and then just appearing in shot the top of the screen Bertie in the field with another caravan this is the view from the campsite across the beautiful Somerset Levels, a coastal plain and wetland area which is south of Bath and Bristol, which agriculturally is about 70% grassland and the rest is arable. As the camera pans around, it brings back into view the campsite and the farm and in the distance you can see what I think is the Mendip Hills, if I get that wrong, please put something into the comments and correct me. And as it pans round further in the distance, you can see the famous Glastonbury Tour. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, please give us the thumbs up and don't forget if you subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell you'll get those weekly notifications we do try to post every Wednesday so I will see you next time